Hey guys, so for today's video, I am just going to be repainting one of my super old digital paintings from four years ago, and I chose this one because when I had created it, I loved it very, very much, and I decided to see what it would look like if I had painted it today with my four years of improvement, and um, also how long it would take me to paint, because the original one took me about six hours to paint, and actually the one I just did right now took me about two hours. So it's kind of interesting how much faster I am at painting as well. I thought this would tie in very well with what I want to talk about today, which is how to quickly improve your art, and this topic was suggested by a super lovely follower both here on YouTube and on my Instagram, and uh, her name is Sweet Pigment, and she comments on and likes everything that I make, so thank you so much, you're super cute. Just before I start into this discussion, I wanted to let you know that I'm not going to be saying you can probably drastically improve your art in like a week or a month, but I think in like a couple of months you should see some pretty big improvement if you do some of this stuff. The first point I want to make is to be observant in real life and aware of how things or people work or move. It's very important to know what a person or an object looks like before you paint it, and you can use reference, which I'll get to later, but it's great to have a little bit of understanding just knowing how people move and they act and how their body looks at a certain position and that kind of thing. It's pretty important, I think, so try to be observant in real life. Next point is to study books on anatomy and realistic drawing and painting. And I think realism is very important when you're starting out because when you first start drawing or painting, you don't really have a great sense of proportion and how bodies look and how things look. And I think it's very important to know how to draw something realistically before you can stylize it because stylizing kind of subtracting information from something realistic. So if you don't have anything realistic to take from, I don't think you can have a very good base for drawing. So I think realism is very important to understand at least. There's a bunch of resources at the library or on DeviantArt and I really recommend going to the library and just grabbing all the books on anatomy and realistic drawing and shading and lighting and all that and taking them and studying them. I think that's super important because, I mean, that's what I did and I think it helped me. The third point I want to make is to draw or paint daily if possible and to practice. I know a lot of people will say practice makes perfect and that kind of thing. Practice, in the end, is the most important thing. It doesn't matter how many books you read and how much reference you use and how observant you are in real life. If you don't practice, in the end, you're not going to be very successful. So try to practice as much as possible. And with that, I think keeping a sketchbook is very important because it just lets you do a bunch of doodles and drawings that don't have to be complete and don't have to be perfect, but they keep you drawing and keep your hand moving. Also, if you're scared of starting a new sketchbook, just get something super cheap that you won't mind ruining or draw on copy paper because you won't really care if you throw that away and it kind of sucks if you draw something really nice on copy paper but it's better than ruining a bunch of super expensive like bristol board and watercolor paper if you're gonna not like the results on it you know so it takes a lot of pressure off if you use a kind of a crummy old sketchbook to draw all the time and i have a tiny little pocket sketchbook that i keep with me all the time in my bag and i draw in it a bunch when i'm out or I write down little notes or ideas for paintings, and I think it's actually very helpful to have something like that. The next point I want to make is to be consistent, and I think consistency is very important in this whole quickly improving your art. Don't take a month off of art just because you don't feel like doing it. Because a lot of times as an artist, you don't feel like doing art, but you know you should do it, you know, so that's why you do it. If you don't feel like doing it and you just take a month off, you lose your rhythm and you might forget some of the stuff you learned and you might lose some of the coordination that you've been practicing and exercising. So just try to keep at it and work as consistently as possible. And if you need a break, just take a week or two off just to de-stress, but don't take much more than that, I would say. It's just great to have a rhythm when you're drawing or painting and just to make yourself schedule for when you should draw or paint like every other day or every day. Or make sure that you have a certain amount of hours in a week that you did art. The next point I want to make is that you should post your art journey online and start getting followers and fans. I got Instagram just to stalk my friends and I had no intention of posting anything online. I'm not really one of those people who likes to post a bunch of like selfies and pictures of myself and whatever. 
and so I had no idea if I should just keep my account completely empty or if I just should start posting art and that's what I started doing and I noticed that I was getting followers and other people were posting art on Instagram as well and so I was like oh this is cool um, and I started to build a tiny following and it was great because a lot of people were very encouraging and they liked my art and they wanted to see more and it made me feel like oh wow I'm actually doing something like people can see my art and they like it so it made me want to post more online as opposed to being indifferent to my art and it also gives you a sense of accountability that if you don't post you're quote unquote disappointing your followers and I don't think that's super accurate a lot of the times because it's just the internet but it kind of makes you feel like oh no you know I haven't shared anything with my followers anytime soon I need to make some art for them <laughs> so I think it's good because it keeps you accountable try out different mediums and find out what you like the most. I think that's really cool to experiment because it sometimes will get rid of the stagnation that can come from just painting or drawing the same thing over and over and it can be exciting to try out a different medium and to see how you like it and you might find something that works way better than what you're using at the moment. I've tried out a bunch of things. My favorite mediums are still graphite and dig digital painting but I actually really like using markers and I've been doing that a lot. I think it's great to just try out as many mediums as you can and find out what's the best fit for you. The next thing I want to talk about is use a model or a reference until you're comfortable drawing from experience or from how you remember something looks like. If you're not very good at drawing the face, just try to use um, a model while you're painting your drawing and you don't have to copy exactly, but it just lets you know how the shapes or contours of the face work, you know, and as the more you practice with models and references or whatever, you start to get a feel of how that looks like, and you might not need reference for your next paintings and stuff. For me, I use reference a lot of times when it comes to hands, just because I really need to know that I don't get them terribly wrong. So. Personally, right now, I'm working on using reference for hands so that I can get comfortable to draw him without any reference. And the next thing I want to talk about is try to complete as many works or projects as possible. And I think that's very important because when you complete a painting, for example, you'll go through all the processes and stages of that painting and you'll know how to do each of them, right? If you leave a painting unfinished, you won't get the experience from the last stages of the painting that you didn't complete. As many times as you can go through the process, you'll get more streamlined and you'll rule out some things that you can see are not working for you and that are causing mistakes and you'll just get better at the whole process. I think it's very important to try to finish as many paintings or drawings or works as you can. And the last point I want to make is don't push yourself too hard to improve. Don't make it this huge like black rain cloud over your head that if you don't improve you're not going to get ahead or whatever. You know, Don't worry about that so much. Try to have fun with the process and be happy with how things are turning out. Some people have just been drawing longer than you have. Don't worry about not being as good as your favorite artist because if you keep working at it, I'm sure you will be as good or better than they are in the end. I'm 100% sure that if you keep working at your art and you just practice and you have a positive attitude and you enjoy the process in the end, you will have a bunch of fun and you will improve tons. So I hope that was maybe a little bit helpful for you. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos because I put them out every Sunday. And if you would like to, please check out my shop for prints and originals. And if you would like to check it out, the link will be in the description right at the top. Thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!